Hello again from Digicore Things. Having recently completed a 6502 CPU card for the minimalist Europe card system, I now have all the system cards that I need for recreating the early 80s Creator Vision console. Those of you who have been following along with the evolution of my MECB based flexible system design will know that I earlier mentioned that I was keen to recreate a Creator Vision console. The Creator Vision was a colour TV console based on the 6502, the TMS9929 video display processor and the SN76489 sound generator chip. Note that I'm calling this a recreation, not an emulation. This is because the intention is to recreate basically the same hardware that was used in the original Creator Vision. Nothing is being emulated. In theory, by configuring the original retro hardware on our MECB system to mimic the address map of an original Creator Vision, we should be able to just run Creator Vision software unchanged. So first off, let's take a closer look at the Creator Vision's design and address map. Here is the initial schematic of a Creator Vision, which includes the CPU, address decode and the TMS VDP interfacing. As was typical in the design for this type of mass market consumer device, a number of shortcuts were taken in order to save on costs by minimising the number of parts needed. With the Creator Vision, a couple of things are worth noting. Firstly, the address decoding is achieved with just a single 74LS139 dual two line to four line decoder chip. The first decoder in the chip splits the 6502's 64K memory space into four 16K segments. The lower 16K segment is then further split into four 4K segments by the other decoder in the chip. The top three 16K segments are labelled ROM2, ROM1 and ROM0, which was clearly intended for up to 48K of ROM in the address map. The four 4K segments at the bottom of the address map are firstly for the static RAM, then we have labelled PIA, VDP R and VDP W. So we have a 4K segment for RAM. Noting that the Creator Vision actually only has one kilobyte of static RAM on board via two 2114 1K by 4 static RAM chips. As the 1K of static RAM is address decoded as a single 4K address space, the contents of the 1K RAM is effectively replicated four times. A Motorola MC6821 PIA is used for the I.O. The PIA only requires four addresses, but it is also allocated a full 4K of address space. Rather wasteful. Similarly, the TMS VDP is allocated across two 4K address spaces, so it is essentially using up a full 8K of the 64K available address space, even though a TMS VDP chip only actually requires two address locations. Massively wasteful, but a very simple one chip address decoding solution. This is the result of cost saving design effectively minimising the decoding logic to save on chip count, but resulting in a large wastage of the address space. But probably the most concerning thing in terms of the effect of cost saving design is the VDP read and VDP write decoding logic. In addition to the decoding of the two 4K address spaces, only two 74LS32 OR gates are used to then just gate these chip select signals with the phase 1 clock output of the 6502 to create the VDP read and write chip selects. Now this simplicity means that the CPU's read write signal is not included in the TMS chip's read or write selection logic. This means that if the software were to inadvertently write to the VDP read 4K address space, 
would actually be creating a hardware bus driver conflict between the VDP's data bus output drivers and the CPU's data bus output drivers. Not a good situation when software can create potentially damaging output driver shorts. So with that brief analysis of the original Creator Vision address decoding logic, let's take a look at what the memory map looks like. I've put together this simple spreadsheet to summarize how the 64k address space of the 6502 CPU is split up. We can use this to configure our MECB card address decode PLD logic. Oh, and one other thing to note from the Creator Vision schematic is that the MOS 6502 CPU is clocked at 2 MHz. So, to recreate a Creator Vision on MECB, I just need the 6502 CPU card, the TMS VDP display card, and a Motorola I.O. card with sound. This gives us all the hardware that we need to run Creator Vision code. For the 6502 CPU card, I've inserted a 2 MHz oscillator. Then let's take a look at the Win CUPL address decode logic. Let's look at the CPU card first. As you can see, I've defined a chip select logic block for the Creator Vision. In this case, I've assigned 4K of RAM to the bottom 4K of the address map. 0000, 000 to 0FFF. For the ROM, I've initially just allocated the top 32K of the address map, 8000 to FFFF. This is because I'm using a 32 kilobyte AT28C256 on the CPU card, so we might as well just use it all. Note that my intention, eventually, is to utilize the MECB 1 megabyte ROM expansion card. In this case, for the ROM expansion card, would disable the CPU card's own onboard ROM and instead allocate a full 48 kilobyte ROM space to the 1 megabyte ROM expansion card. This would then allow up to 16 switchable 48 kilobyte banks on the ROM expansion card to allow us to switch between 16 different Creative Vision cartridges. Nice. For now, 32 kilobytes of onboard CPU card ROM will enable us to test our recreation is working before adding in the expansion card. So next, let's look at the Motorola I.O. card PLD address select logic. For the I.O. card, we only need the PIA. Note also, the PIA is memory mapped for the 4K address range 2000 to 2FFF. Finally, we have the TMS video card PLD select logic. For this, I've memory mapped the VDPR and VDPW addresses as per the memory map. However, I've also added the read and write signals to protect against the Creator Vision's potentially damaging driver conflict from inadvertently writing to the VDP read address range. Okay, with three newly programmed PLDs, all nicely labelled. Let's get them inserted in the cards. I'll start with the CPU card. Put the CPU card back. Then I'll do the I.O. card.
and lastly we have the TMS VDP card. For that I've got a zero incision for socket which makes life a little bit easier. Okay, that's all of our three PLD chips installed. So next we need to program our ROM. First we have the Creator Visions BIOS, which is a 2 kilobyte 2716 ROM image. We'll need to load it at the top of our 32 kilobyte ROM space. So in our programmer, we'll load the 2 kilobyte bin file into the 32 kilobyte buffer at address 7800, which is the top 2 kilobytes of the 32k ROM. Next, I'll load the Creative Vision Space Invaders game, Sonic Invaders. Now this is a 4 kilobyte game cartridge. I understand that 4K game cartridges are expected to be located at B000 to BFFF. So we'll add the ROM image to the programmer buffer at offset 3000, which will equate to B000 in the 64k address space. Now, with the ROM programmed, we'll get that inserted in our CPU card. So I'll take the CPU card off again, take out the old ROM, and get our freshly programmed ROM installed. And let's plug the CPU card back in. Finally, I'll plug in my sound amplifier. And we should now be ready to apply power and see what happens. Here goes. success. Sonic Invaders is running and looks and sounds awesome. So we have a verified Creative Vision recreation. Now Sonic Invader is running in a track mode as I don't yet have any controller input. So with this success the next step is to interface some game controllers so I can actually play some games. But I think that'll do for part one. So far so good. That's it. Thanks for watching.